Real quick, the only ask I could ever have of you guys is to help spread the word so we can help more women lose body fat, build muscle, reach their goals, and feel insanely confident. And the only way we can do that is if you rate, review, and share this podcast. So the single thing I ask for you to do is if you could leave a review, it will take you 10 seconds and it will mean the absolute world to me and may change the world of someone else. You have an injury. Well, how am I supposed to work through this injury rather than just accepting that you have an injury or my husband ended up in the hospital, uh, but I need to go work out, right? Like that's an extreme thinking. You're just going through the motions on a weekly basis or you're chaining up your freaking workout every single day and it's something different then over time your muscles may not continue to grow or adapt and so like if you're doing that and or you're not doing it and you're like inconsistent or you're doing something different every single day or you're not you know challenging yourself and you're just going through the motions man six months from now you could be like or even a year from now, you could be banging your head into a freaking wall being like, man, why am I not seeing the results that I want of putting on more muscle? Why am I not getting stronger? That's why. Time under tension is a big thing, you guys. Slowing down the movement, mixing in what I said with like uh, four and six here. I said four is increasing the speed of the movement. Six is the opposite, as I said, slowing down the movement, putting more time under tension. So like, think about it. You got a barbell squat, right? And you're lowering in the negative portion of the lift. And all of a sudden, man, like you're like, it burns, right? Um, and vice versa, all of the other things that you could potentially be doing and other uh, lifts as well in the negative portion of the lift. And this can be more effective at um, inducing muscle damage. And from there, because you're breaking down the muscle inside of the gym, you will then, um, you know, you're creating the muscle damage, you're creating the muscle tears and the fibers and all that stuff. Post-workout, obviously promoting the growth is what you're going to be doing when you're eating right and recovering right. If your goal is to build muscle, to see the differences in your body composition, to have those visible changes it's like muscles active tissue and it gets its energy from food okay so like there's that if you didn't know that now you know it muscle doesn't stop your metabolism doesn't stop it needs energy and it gets that energy in order to grow in order to be recovered all of the jazz from food okay plus on top of that there's some other things that happen for you guys that are am workout goers practicing IF, or you're not eating before you work out, you are lifting in a catabolic state, you're catabolic during your workout. So in layman terms, when you're in this state, your body is breaking down muscle and storing body fat for the production of energy to get you through that workout. That is completely counterproductive to the goals that you, that you are working towards. You want to live in an anabolic state where you build and maintain muscle and burn away body fat. You get there by fueling your body properly with food pre and post workout and all throughout the entire day. Fitness overall is a game of consistency. So spreading your efforts such as like working out for an hour across a 20-day period is far more beneficial than you trying to go all out for three hours in the gym for the first two weeks of you starting your fitness journey. Not only is that a far more beneficial approach, but it also allows for recovery, for adaptation, for growth. Because you guys know that I've said this time and time again, you don't build muscle inside of the gym. You build muscle in the following hours with proper nutrition, sleep, hydration, all of the things after that workout. So it's not about how hard you can go all at once, you guys. It's not about how hard you need to change all of these things when you're first starting a fitness journey. Some people focus on changing 100 things when really you need to just focus focus on one thing, whether that may be drinking more water, whether that may be throwing out all the processed shit inside of your house and putting in whole foods so that you have more better options to choose from, right? You have an injury. 
well, how am I supposed to work through this injury rather than just accepting that you have an injury? Or my husband ended up in the hospital, uh, but I need to go work out, right? Like that's an extreme thinking. Like there's, you feel like there's no flexibility uh, or like to adjusting ex- your expectations that you have for yourself and fl- following this pl- this thing plan based off of a circumstance or life that happens, right? You feel like you have to like, you, like you have to be, you have to, be 100% perfect in the plan that you're following if life happens. And that can result in like the inability to adapt to change or unexpected situations that are going to happen in your life. Being okay with rest days is extremely important. Being okay with allowing yourself to have occasional treats, ice cream, you know, donuts, um, you, candy, I've candy, I've a dub chocolate every single night at the end of my night, allowing yourself to have those things. It's not going to derail your progress. Okay. What's going to derail your progress is continuing into this all or nothing mindset. Real quick, the only ask I could ever have of you guys is to help spread the word so we can help more women lose body fat, build muscle, reach their goals, and feel insanely confident. And the only way we can do that is if you rate, review, and share this podcast. So the single thing I ask for you to do is if you could leave a review, it will take you 10 seconds and it will mean the absolute world to me and may change the world of someone else.